Praise the Lord and welcome to this program. Thank you for joining us for this time of teaching the Word of God. I'm excited about what God is going to share during this teaching time. You know, we're going to be going into the actual service where this teaching took place in the sanctuary where the Holy Spirit was moving very strongly and powerfully. But before we do that, I want to just get you started to really, really get you introduced to this subject that I think is going to really literally change your life and bring you to an awareness of what God wants to do for you. God wants to do some great things through your life because he's divinely called you and he has a destiny for you and his purpose is being fulfilled in your life. So hold your head up, square your shoulders and get ready to be launched into your destiny. I wanna to talk to you about great opposition follows great opportunity. You know, there's so many opportunities in life that we are basically uh, given and that we uh, are exposed to but you got to understand that when greatness is in you already, because you see the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, you've already overcome as a believer because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus taught in John chapter 14 and verse 12, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works. So as a believer, as a born again believer, as a son of God, as a king in the earth, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, he redeemed us and made us kings and priests. We shall reign in his earth. You are a king and you are destined for greatness. And opportunities are going to come to you many times. But you got to understand that you got to prepare yourself for opposition. Because as God gives you opportunities to do great things, and as God brings you into an opportunity for great things to be done through you, you're going to face opposition from the enemy. He's going to always try to come steal, kill, and destroy. Because Jesus taught in John 10 and 10, the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy, but I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And more abundantly comes from the Greek word parasols, one word originally, two words in the English translation. It means more than enough, overflow, super abundant, extraordinary abundance. That's what Jesus came for you to have as far as life is concerned. I want to read a few verses for you though. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, David was given the opportunity to fight Goliath, who everybody was afraid of, including King Saul who stood heads and shoulders above all of the men. And Goliath was a mighty slayer of men and a giant. And David was a little boy that took care of sheep, but he was the only one that was willing to take the opportunity that was being made available to everybody to kill Goliath and end up getting the king's daughter, virgin daughter, becoming wealthy and rich and his father's house being freed from any kind of bondage. And David, he knew that people were opposing him and didn't want him to even try to kill Goliath. But he was determined because he had killed a bear and a lion with his hands. So he knew that God was with him. He knew that God was gonna be his source of strength and power to, to, to do this great act of, of, uh, of uh, defeat against Goliath. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 31, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 31. And when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him. David was saying that he would do it. He would take the opportunity and do it. And they told King Saul. But David, and David uh, said to Saul, let no man's heart uh, fail because of him, because of Goliath. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Now David's telling King Saul, I'll do it. I'll take this opportunity. Even though there's great opposition against me, this giant, I'll do it. And this is what Saul responds. This is how people will discourage you. People will tell you, you can't. You know, you got to realize that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Philippians 4 and verse 13 says, don't let negative people, gainsayers, don't let the peanut gallery, don't let the critics and the discouragers stop you from doing the great things that God gives you the opportunity to do. David says, and well, Saul says, and Saul said unto David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine, see, discouraging him, uh, and fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And, uh, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear, and, uh, and uh, it took a lamb out of the pet flock. And I went out after him and smote him and, and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. And thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. You see, it doesn't matter how many lions and bears come against you. When you have an opportunity to do something great in business, opportunity to do something great in financial endeavors, uh, in, in ministry, uh, in, in career, you go ahead and you do it. And even though people discourage you and they oppose you with negativity, you do what David did also in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'll conclude there and we'll go into the sanctuary. David encouraged himself. When all of his men were going to leave him and all of his men 
thought he was a failure and David was at his lowest point. It says in 1 Samuel, Samuel 30, verse 7, David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. You be a self-encourager. You be a self-pusher. And you be a self-cheerleader for you. And God will give you the power and the strength to take advantage of every opportunity to do great things no matter of how many, no matter what opposition is coming against you. Join us now as we go into the sanctuary for more teaching on great opposition follows great opportunity. God bless you. We'll be back. Talk, talk to you later. Have you ever thought, if I just had this, I could do that? We all have been faced with this challenge sometime in our life. In today's message, Great Opposition Follows Great Opportunity, Dr. Summerfield encourages you and challenges you to push through the opposition until you can capitalize on the great opportunity. For your love seat of $20 or more, we will rush this motivational teaching, Great Opposition Follows Great Opportunity, plus a bonus book, Knowing Our Delegated Authority. Visit our website, franksummerfield.com or call 1-866-841-1070 and start to capitalize on life's great opportunities. Say, I'm redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Say, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. Say, I'm redeemed from poverty. I'm redeemed from sickness. I'm redeemed from low self-esteem. I'm redeemed from death. I'm redeemed from worry. I'm redeemed from fear. I'm redeemed from everything that Adam made me a victim of. Give God a praise clap for that. You're redeemed. You are redeemed. You've been bought with a price, bought back by God. The devil knows that God's going to do great things in your life. He lurks around, seeks around to try to see who he can destroy through fear, through doubt, through worry, through confusion, through low self-esteem, and through all the negativities of life, he's looking for somebody that will accept his foolishness. But you have to stand against the powers of the devil and the forces of the devil and know that you are accepted and you are beloved. That grace covers you. You're good with God. You and God are cool. And no matter what you got to face, God has got your back, your front, your side, your top. Your inside, your outside. Come on, somebody. He's got you covered totally. You got to believe that. Opposition is going to come against your destiny. God has a plan and a destiny for your life. Opposition will come in the form sometimes of trials, tests, afflictions, adversities, situations. No wonder James chapter 1 tells us in verse 2 through 4, in summary, brethren, count it all joy. Have a Holy Ghost party. Have a Holy Ghost celebration. When you fall into divers, temptations, traps, circumstances, temptations comes from the Greek word originally, parasmus. It means adversities and afflictions and tests and trials that are divinely sent or divinely allowed by God to verify, substantiate, and approve the faith of the believer. Because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You are a believer in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are more than a conqueror, Romans 8.37 says. You've already overcome, 1 John 4 and 4 says. Because the greater one Jesus is in you than he is in the world, you're going to face opposition. Amen. Whatever your faith is in, it'll be opposed. Amen. Yes. Whatever your belief is, it'll be opposed. Amen. The devil is an opposer yes. of the conviction we have in God. He will oppose with natural data to try to get you to believe you are not accepted, you are not beloved, you don't deserve grace, you don't deserve God's mercy, you don't deserve healing, you don't deserve deliverance, something's wrong with you or more than one thing's wrong with you. He's trying to get you to be negative. 
Because negativity is doubt, fear, worry. It is not faith. It is not conviction. It is not a stand in God. You must believe you are accepted. You must believe you're beloved. You must believe you're special. You must believe that God chose you before the foundation of the very world to be holy without blame before him in love. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Say, I'm forgiven. According to the riches of his grace. Say, his grace is rich and covers me from now until Jesus comes, regardless of what I face. Would you praise the Lord for that? You got to believe that. You got to believe that. Count it all joy when you fall into divers or various trials and tests and circumstances. Knowing this, there are some things you have got to just know. And if you don't know already, you better know. Because if you don't know, then you don't know. Amen. And you can't go if you don't know. And you can't grow if you don't know. Right. Knowing this, that the trying or the proving of our faith worketh patience. Yes. I'm, I'm still quoting James chapter 1. Count it all joy when you fall into divers, various tests and trials, situations and circumstances. Knowing this, that the trying, though kimion is the Greek word for trying, Originally, it means to actually go through a smelting hot furnace experience. You know, gold is put in a furnace to get purified, to get rid of its impurities and its excess waste that keeps its value down. So they purge out things that are not the gold so that the gold remains as the gold. So the heat and the fire purifies the gold. Porcelain is put in ovens at exceedingly high temperatures in order to create a hardening factor that wouldn't be there without the heat to make it more resilient to breakage so it's not as delicate as it was. And the oppositions to your life, the devil brings them to stop you, but God allows them to make you stronger more resistant to breakage and purer than gold. I believe 1 Peter 1 says the trying of your faith somewhere around verse 6 is more precious than gold. The oppositions you face and the circumstances you're dealing with as a believer are verifying that you are more than a conqueror. You can't know you're more than a conqueror if there ain't nothing to conquer. I don't know if y'all are with me today. You cannot know you're more than a conqueror if there's nothing to conquer. Amen. Conquerors are conquerors because they destroy opposition. Amen. Conquerors like Napoleon, Alexander the Great, and those kind of natural figures, they're called conquerors because they conquered opposition. Amen. What do you think you got to do? They were conquerors but Romans 8.37 says, in all these things, you are more than a conqueror. Would you praise the Lord for that? So you can count on opposition coming. You're believing God for your marriage to be prosperous, to be successful, to be blessed, to be joy-filled. Then count on opposition to that. Count on tests coming, trials coming, circumstances coming to challenge that belief. It's a simple scenario. It's basically a game of opposites. Not as complicated as chess. Much simpler. You believe the devil comes with opposition. You trust he comes with circumstances to try to make you not trust. You're standing on the word. He comes with things to try to get you to get off of the word, to not hold on to the word. Simple scenarios. The things that come are coming because they're opposing what you believe. I don't know if y'all are getting this. They come to oppose your belief. Because great oppositions 
follow great opportunities. Those oppositions know, Terrence, that you've got opportunities that are designated for your life by God. They know, Kwame, that there are things that are going to happen through your life as a husband, as a father, as a leader, as an executive, as, as, as a, a member of the body of Christ, as an example of Jesus' love and mercy and salvation and power. The powers of hell know that God's going to bring that to pass through your life. So they automatically want to set up things and bring opposition to that to try to get you to back off of it, to not engage in God's purpose for your life. See, the purpose of God for your life comes from the power of God. And the purpose of God to your life, for your life, is a threat against hell and the enemy. Because when God's purpose is fulfilled in your life, then you become a blessing to others and enable them to fulfill their purpose. You're too much of a help to other people for the devil to leave you alone. If you really want to know why he's up in your face because he knows you got grace the devil's in your face because he knows you got grace would you praise him for that that's why he's up in your face up in your stuff trying to mess your stuff up trying to rob you and all he can do is oppose with an opposite element he can only oppose with something opposite what you believe to what you believe opposite to what you're going after to what you know is yours. There are things that God has ordained for your life that come from the purpose that he has for your life, that come from the power that he has for your life, that no devil, no demons, no opposition can stop, Amen. although they will try. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, Eyes have not seen in the natural. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it isn't. We're not walking by what we see anyhow. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, we walk by faith and not by what? Science. Your miracle might not be visible, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe in verse 16 says, these light afflictions, oppositions, circumstances, difficulties, trials, and tests are actually but for a moment, and they really work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory while we look not at the things that are seen. Because they are temporal. They're temporary. They're natural. They're physical. They're subject to change in a moment. But we focus and look on things that are not seen. Now faith is the substance of things, Hebrews 11 and 1, that are not seen. And the evidence of things that, that oh, let me see, the substance of, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah, okay, good. And the evidence or the proof of things that are not seen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God and the word, their word, the word for word there is rhema in the Greek, the spoken word. You have got to speak the word of God right. in spite of what opposition comes. It don't matter what it look like, how multiple your trials and tests are. Think it not strange when you fall into various trials or count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Sometimes you got more than one at a time. Sometimes you got several things going on that are opposing your destiny and opposing God's pill, excuse me, will and plan for your life. And sometimes you don't know what to do because you're trying to figure out, I just got used to dealing with this one. Now what in the world is this? And God, I don't understand why I'm dealing with five things right now. Count it all joy. I know that sounds crazy. Count all joy. Be a fool for Jesus. Count all joy. Get some shouts out of your mouth. Get some dance in advance. Because breakthrough is coming. Don't break down till you break through. Did you hear what the Holy Ghost just said? Don't break down till you break through. You ain't got time to be breaking down. You too busy breaking through. The breakthrough is coming. I don't care how long it takes. How much opposition there is to it. 
The breakthrough is coming. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and have not entered your heart. Yet the things that God has prepared has preordained for your life because you love him. And he's revealing them to us by his spirit right now. The Holy Ghost is talking to us. I know it sounds like my voice and it looks like me, but the Holy Ghost is talking. I'm his vessel right now. I'm his instrument. And he's telling us that there are some things that are going to break through if you don't break down. Tell your neighbor, I ain't got no time for no sad sack stories. I'm too busy demonstrating God's glory. Would you praise the Lord for that? Tell your neighbor, I ain't got time to be given in, given up, or given out. I'm too busy processing my breakthrough. Praise the Lord for that. You process it. You process it. You process it. Your best time is on its way. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the joy of the Lord is in you right now. Count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into these situations and you face these oppositions. Knowing this, that the trying, the chemical, the smelting hot furnace experience that proves your faith. The trying of your faith will work patience out of you. But don't give up, give in, give out. Hold on. Let patience have her perfect work. Tell you, David, be processed by your patience that's being extended by your faith in your circumstance, in your tests, in your trials, when you face opposition. Praise the Lord for that. You're being processed. It don't feel good. It might not look good. But be processed. We have to hold on, the Holy Ghost says. Remember what I said earlier? The Holy Ghost said, hold on. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35 says, hold fast to your confidence, your trust, your belief in your victory, your breakthrough, and your circumstance. Hold fast to your confidence, which has great, great, great recompense, payoff, and reward. Hold fast. Don't let go. Be confident. And the reward is coming. God will pay you and bless you for trusting him. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and I'm so glad you had a chance to, to view this uh, telecast. Hopefully you heard a good amount of the teaching because, you know, you, you got to get the Word of God in you because, you know, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. This is my youngest son, uh, Minister Joshua. He's our young adult minister here. And uh, won't you agree, Joshua, that the more you hear the Word of God, the more you'll believe? Definitely, yes, sir. So you got to believe the Word of God. Now, the way you can hear more of this message is getting the whole entire message on CD or DVD. In fact, there's a person waiting to take your call right now, toll free number, if you'll call, and if you'll give an offering of $20 or more, $20 or more, at least sowing a seed to help us continue to minister to you, we're gonna get the CD series to you and the DVD series to you of your choice, either one, in its entirety, and we're gonna rush it to you, and then we're gonna give you a bonus, a bonus gift of the book knowing our delegated authority. That's gonna be just free. We wanna bless you with it because we want you to walk in the authority that Jesus Christ gives you as a believer so that you can have victory over the devil and everything that comes against you. So if you call now and a $20 or more love seed offering, you get the CD or DVD entire message that we just ministered and we'll give you a free copy of knowing our delegated authority. This book can change your life. So take advantage of it now and you know, we're gonna pray for you right now, and then we're gonna wait for your call, and we're gonna to continue to pray for you. Let's pray for them. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people that are viewing now. If anyone needs Jesus as their Savior and Lord, let them pray this prayer now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and rose from the grave. Father, 
Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Savior and Lord now. I believe you and I receive your blood, your forgiveness, and your mercy. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, you're a believer now. You need to call that number and get this whole message in its entirety. Call the prayer line so we can you know, pray for you and send you some materials to bless you because you know this is the most exciting time in your life and you don't have to be a loser. In fact, you are a winner already. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are victorious. So call that number and get this teaching in its entirety and build your faith and build your life and accomplish what God has called you to do. He loves you. We love you. Please listen to us again. Watch us again and order that series right now and send that love seed offering and God will bless you tremendously. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Have you ever thought, if I just had this, I could do that? We all have been faced with this challenge sometime in our life. In today's message, Great Opposition Follows Great Opportunity, Dr. Summerfield encourages you and challenges you to push through the opposition until you can capitalize on the great opportunity. For your love seat of $20 or more, we will rush this motivational teaching, Great Opposition Follows Great Opportunity, plus a bonus book, Knowing Our Delegated Authority. Visit our website, franksummerfield.com or call 1-866-841-1070 and start to capitalize on life's great opportunities. Dr. Frank Summerfield is a gifted motivational leader. He is an international television personality, acclaimed speaker, and best-selling author. Dr. Summerfield has led, managed, and inspired individuals, groups, and teams of people for more than 40 years. As founder and CEO of Word of God Fellowship Church, Word of God Christian Academy, Daycare, and Summerfield Ministries, Dr. Summerfield knows how to overcome obstacles and adversity. He draws from his own real-life testimonies to encourage and empower others to achieve their goals. To find out how to have Dr. Frank Summerfield speak at your next event, call Travis at 919-834-1141, extension 2223. Hi, how you doing? My name is Brother Travis Fowles and this is my wife, Sister Felicia. If you're looking for a family-based church, if you're looking for praise and worship, if you're looking for the seniors, saints, if you're looking for uh, a choir, if you're looking for something for children, Word of God Fellowship is the place you want to be. I guarantee you, you come in, you'll have the best experience of your life. This is where you want to be. Word of God Fellowship, Sundays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Bible study. Our pastors are Bishop Frank and Pastor Jonelle Summerfield, and I promise you, your life will be impacted and changed forever. Forever. Join us soon. God bless. God bless.